First Kings three, Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. He brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people, however, were still sacrificing at the high places because the temple had not yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administrating justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke. Then he realized that it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son. The dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, No, the dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, this one says, My son is alive and your son is dead. While that one says, No, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, Cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king, Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, Neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, 
They held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. 1 Kings 4 So King Solomon ruled over all Israel. And these were his chief officials, Azariah, son of Zadok, the priest, Ali Horeb, and Ahijah, sons of Shisha, secretaries, Jehoshaphat, sons of Ahilud, recorder, Benaiah, son of Jehodiah, commander in chief, Zadok and Abithar, priests, Azariah, son of Nathan, in charge of the district governors. Zabud, son of Nathan, a priest and advisor to the king. Ahishar, palace administrator. Adoniram, son of Abda, in charge of a forced labor. Solomon had 12 district governors over all Israel, who supplied provisions for the king and the royal household. Each one had to provide supplies for one month in the year. These are their names. Benhur in the hill country of Ephraim, Bendekir, Emekaz, Shalbin, Beth Shemesh, and Ilan Beth Hanan, Ben Hasad in Araboth, Sokko, and all the land of Hafra where he is, Ben Abinadab, in Naphoth Dor, he was married to Tafuth, daughter of Solomon, Bena, son of Ahilud, in Tanakh and Megiddo, and in all of Bashan next to Zarathon, below Zazrael. From Bashan to Abel, Mahola, cross to Jacomi, Ben Gebir, in Ramoth Gilead. In the settlements of Jair, son of Manasseh, in Gilead were his, as well as the region of Argob, in Bashan and its sixty large walled cities, with bronze gate bars. Ahanadab, son of Ido, in Mahanim, Ahimaz, in Naphtali. He had married Bathmoth, daughter of Solomon, Bena, son of Hushai, in Asher, in Elath, Jehoshaphat, son of Parua, in Iskar, Shimai, son of Elah, in Benjamin, Gebir, son of Uri, in Gilead. The country of Sion, king of the Amorites, and the country of Og, king of Bashan, he was the only governor over the district. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They ate, they drank, and they were happy. And Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. These countries were broad tribute and were Solomon's subjects all his life. Solomon's daily provisions were 30 quarts of the finest flour and 60 quarts of meal, 10 head of stole fat cattle, 20 of pasture fat cattle, and 100 sheep and goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roebucks, and choice fowl. For he ruled over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River from Tifsha to Gaza and had a peace on all sides. During Solomon's lifetime, Judah and Israel from Dan to Beersheba, lived in safety everyone under their own vine and under their own fig tree. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for chariot horses and 12,000 horses. The district governors, each in his month, supplied provisions for King Solomon and all who came to the king's table. They saw to it that nothing was lacking. They also brought to the proper place their quotas of barley and straw for the cherry horses and the other horses. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight, and a breath of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East, and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan, the Azrahite, wiser than Haman, Kilgal, and Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke three thousand proverbs, and his song numbered a thousand and five. He spoke about plant life, from the cedar of Lebanon to the heat of that grows out of the walls. 
He also spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. From all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. 1 Kings 5 When Hiram king of Tyre heard that Solomon had been anointed king to succeed his father David, he sent his envoys to Solomon because he had always been on friendly terms with David. Solomon sent back this message to Hiram. You know that because of the wars waged against my father David from all sides, he could not build a temple for the name of the Lord his God until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, and there is no adversary or disaster. I intend, therefore, to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord told my father David, when he said, Your son, whom I will put on the throne in your place, will build a temple for my name. So give orders that cedars of Lebanon be cut for me. My men will work with yours, and I will pay you for your men whatever wages you set. You know that we have no one so skilled in felling timber as the Sidonians. When Hiram heard Solomon's message, he was greatly pleased and said, Praise be to the Lord today. For he has given David a wise son to rule over this great nation. So Hiram sent word to Solomon, I have received the message you sent me, and I will do all you want in providing the cedar and juniper logs. My men will haul them down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea, and I will flood them as rafts by sea to the place you specify. There I will separate them, and you can take them away. And you are to grant my wish by providing food for my royal household. In this way, Hiram kept Solomon supplied with all the cedar and juniper logs he wanted. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household, in addition to 20,000 bath of pressed olive oil. Solomon continued to do this for Hiram year after year. The Lord gave Solomon wisdom just as he had promised him. There were peaceful relations between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon conscripted laborers from all Israel, 30,000 men. He sent them up to Lebanon in shift of 10,000 a month, so that they spent one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adonarim was in charge of the forced labor. Solomon had 70,000 carriers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hills, as well as 3,300 foremen who supervised the project and directed the workers. At the king's command, they removed from the quarry large blocks of a high grade stone to provide a foundation of a dressed stone for the temple. The craftsmen of Solomon and Hiram, and workers from Biblos, cut and prepared the timber and stone for the building of the temple. Amen.